It's early in the morning. A big ship is nearing the end of a long voyage. The ship is called the Baltic Star, and it isn't at sea, as we might think. The Baltic Star is in the river Humber, on its way to the port of Hull. A river pilot goes on board, up the rope ladder. He will take charge of the ship and bring it safely into the docks at Hull, where the ship's cargo will be unloaded by the dockers. The Baltic Star has already traveled 1,600 kilometers from Leningrad in Russia, bringing Russian tractors and machine tools to the docks at Hull. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Captain. My name's Wilkin. Captain Pilot. Well, welcome aboard. She's all yours. Thirteen knots. Steady as she goes. Thank you. Could you put the helm to port and full speed? Full well, speed. Before. Full speed, Oscar. Yep. Yeah. Right, Starboard easy now, please. Starboard easy. Let's leave the Baltic Star for a moment, making its way to the port of Hull, and visit another port, 320 kilometers south from Hull. Let's visit the port of London. Sailing into the Thames, heading for Tilbury Docks in Essex, is the Scandinavian container ship, the Black Watch. Great care has to be taken moving big ships safely in and out of the docks. The Black Watch is one of 3,500 cargo ships which arrive here during a single year. Details of its arrival are radioed ahead. Soon it will be berthed at the docks. Large ships are often pushed into the dock by tugboats. The dockers start work. Potatoes, tea, cases of food. Ships often carry surprising cargoes. A large part of the cargo from Scandinavia is newsprint, huge rolls of paper which can be turned into newspapers. And from Norway and Sweden come timber products, wood for building houses, schools, factories. Throughout the Port of London, there are about 4,000 dockers, 4,000 people who unload the cargoes brought to our country from other countries across the seas. Can you see the huge rolls of paper being unloaded? For speed of handling, much of the cargo that crosses the sea in ships is safely stored in large containers. Huge cranes lift full containers from the ship and lower them onto waiting trucks. Compared to the Port of London, the Port of Hull is nowhere near as big or as busy. As we fly over the Port of Hull in an aeroplane, we can see ships tied up at the dockside. And here too, dockers are busy unloading and loading. In the mist, the famous landmark of Hull, the new Humber Bridge crossing the river. Already at Hull Docks, work is underway, and today we're going to meet two Hull Dockers and see some of the things they do. Well, you're at school this morning, and I expect that your fathers and perhaps some of your mothers and uncles and aunts and lots of people that you know have gone to work. And at the house where I am now, Mr. Albert Birch is just about to set off for work, and he's going to work at the docks in Hull.
Morning, Good Albert. Morning, I'll see you later on down Thanks. at the docks then. Sure. Bye-bye. Bye. And not far away from here, Mr. Birch's brother Tony lives. And he works at the docks too, and he's just about ready to set off. As the Birch brothers set off for work, the Baltic Star is about to end its long voyage from Leningrad in Russia. For the final three kilometers into the dock at Hull, tugboats help it to sail through the narrow entrance to the dock. The river pilot is still in charge of the ship. Fast towing up, please, sir. Hard port. Dead slow ahead, please. Stop engines. Stop towing up. Full tow for it. Give us a tip for it. Full tow for it. The Baltic Star is at the end of its voyage from Leningrad, safely into the docks at Hull. And here's Mr. Albert Birch. His first job today is to move some containers with his powerful forklift truck. How does he like being a docker? Well, I, I first started to work on docks some three years ago now. I, I originally come from a factory. I was 15 years in a factory, which I found very hard to leave. But since I've come on the dock, I found it's probably, the, I think, the greatest job in the world. Look at all the gears you have to change. It must be great fun to drive this truck. Everything that arrives at a dock has to be moved. Today, as containers get larger, dockers have to use a lot of different vehicles and machines to get their job done. What other work does Mr. Birch do? I, I also do uh, row row work, which is uh, running containers into. What was that, row row? Row row, yes. What does that mean? Well, it, 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 it's a, a ship which is loaded through the, the back end of the ship, yes. which you run straight off the quay into the ship with a, a container or a lorry. And it's a very fast way of loading ships. Roro is short for roll on and roll off. With containers, you just drive them straight onto the ship. Here, British machine tools are being loaded onto a Russian ship from the stern of the ship, the back end of the ship. Here are some Russian cars that have been brought to Hull for sale in Great Britain. These cars were made by Russian car workers. The Russians hope we're going to buy these cars so they can earn some money. These British tractors are waiting for a ship to take them to Finland. Farmers in Finland will buy them to plough their fields and bring in the harvest. I asked Mr. Tony Birch, Albert's brother, if it could be dangerous working as a docker. The, the dock industry generally is very, very dangerous. Unless you actually are aware of all the problems on the dock. I wouldn't advise anybody to walk about the dock not knowing. Taking care and keeping safe is always important wherever we are. Probably the biggest reason why I enjoy working in Dockland is possibly the driving aspect in wide open spaces. Being being closed up is, is not enjoyable to somebody who, uh, who likes the open space. This is frozen meat bound for the butchers. Let's see if you know some of the other things being unloaded. Crates of juicy oranges. I think it must be a wonderful feeling to be a crane driver, sitting high up and swinging cargoes from the ship down to the waiting dockers. As we've seen, 
Much of the cargo arriving at the docks is inside huge metal containers. Special vehicles called straddle carriers pick up the containers and carry them to waiting trucks and lorries. The straddle carrier lowers the heavy container onto the truck. The container fits tightly onto the back of the truck. It has to be positioned very carefully at the corners. All around the docks, there are containers waiting to be loaded onto ships. Some of these containers are going to West Africa and India. Some are going to Denmark, Romania and South America. Sometimes the two Birch brothers work together. Here, Tony Birch is driving a low loader truck and his brother Albert is using a forklift truck to move a container. Let's watch. Very carefully, Albert Birch lowers the heavy container onto the back of the low loader. To move heavy equipment and cargo, Dockers have to learn how to drive many different vehicles. Ship owners don't like their ships to be delayed at the docks. They want them out at work, earning their keep. The ships want to be off with their cargoes, crossing the seven seas of the world as soon as they can. The dockers take pride in the speed in which they can turn round a ship. That means to empty it of its cargoes and fill it up with new cargoes. Here, Tony Birch runs a container loaded with machine tools onto a Russian ship which will soon be sailing again for Leningrad. Long before their shift finishes, the two Birch brothers will have done a lot of different jobs. Tomorrow, they could be unloading fruit from a South African ship. Every day, passenger ferries sail from Hull to Belgium and Holland. They carry cars and holidaymakers, and other dockers are hard at work running loads onto the cargo decks, backing the heavy loads onto the ship. At the end of the busy day, I had a quick word with Albert Birch about the life of a docker. And you've got a young son of your own. Would you like him to come and follow in the same I family footsteps? I think so, footsteps? yes, I think so. I followed my father and I'm enjoying it. I don't see any reason why he shouldn't. And there we must leave Hull Docks with our thanks to Mr Albert Birch and Mr Tony Birch for sharing with us the work of a docker. <laughs>